Hey there, I just want to give you a quick overview of the budgeting spreadsheet so that you know the best ways to use it so that you can save more money at your house and spend less. So let's dig into it here. So first you will see that there are two tabs to the budget spreadsheet and that is just for the two different color schemes that are available. So this is the pink and purple color scheme and then there is also a blue and green color scheme. Other than the colors, they're exactly the same. So just pick the one that you like best and go with that one. So the first thing that I will show you here is the dates. Now this month here is dependent on the date that you put in for the start date under budget details. So if you click here, uh, you it will open up a calendar and you can choose any month. And you'll notice that when I change that to September 1st, this automatically changes to September. So I will double click here again and we'll change it back to August. And then we have our end date as well. Now I want to remind you that you will only want to type in this spreadsheet in the white boxes that are within uh, the colorful boxes here. So that means you don't want to type or edit this white space around the boxes because sometimes that contains formulas and you do not want to type in any of the boxes that are shaded in a color in any way because those are automatically populating based on the information that you put in any boxes that are white so technically you could change this if you don't like it to say budget overview if you wanted to put smith family budget or something like that instead you could type in that box there you can type in this currency box. If you are not using the US dollar, you would just go to this box and put in the currency you, will, you want to use instead. And as you can see, it changed automatically all throughout the spreadsheet. So I'm using the US dollar. I will change it back. Uh, and then it will change back to the dollar. Uh, so here you have a space to put in a starting balance. So if you are starting the month with a certain amount of money in your bank account, you can enter that information here. So let's just say we had $500 left over after last month. And as you can see, uh, after I put that in, it automatically updated this summary box here, which will continue to update as we change the various amounts uh, throughout the rest of the spreadsheet. So after I set my dates and my currency and my starting balance, I like to come down here next and enter in our income. So you want to put uh, your paycheck, if you have a partner, you want to put their paycheck in here, as well as any miscellaneous income or side hustles or anything that you have uh, throughout the month. So I can just put paycheck one and then put in an amount for that and then paycheck two and let's say paycheck two is one thousand uh, and then you can put any other miscellaneous income down here also on this side we have our savings so let's say if i save a certain amount for retirement i'm going to put the budgeted amount in for that as well okay the next area, we are going to come back to this variable expenses category because there is a lot more that goes into that. So we'll go over here to our bills and our debt section over here. Debt is uh, anything like maybe your mortgage or student loans or car payment. Uh, that is the type of thing that you would put in here. So you can put, uh, let's say, car payments and you can put the day of the month that it is due. So let's say it's due on the third and you can put the amount uh, that you're budgeting for that car payment. And um, once you have paid the car payment, you will put in the actual amount and then you can check it off to let yourself know that it has been paid. Bills are similar. So these would be things like your utilities or any subscriptions or memberships you have all of those types of things can go in the bills section and they have the same uh, columns here that you can put in. So you can, let's just say we have our electric bill and that is due on the 7th and the budgeted amount for the electric bill we're gonna say is $85. And then once you get the bill, 
you pay the bill, you put the actual amount in here, and then you can check it off. All right, so then we get into variable expenses. Variable expenses are the items that are gonna change a little bit from month to month. You know, our electric bill, our water bill, uh, our subscriptions, they are pretty much are around the same amount each month. Whereas variable expenses are things like um, groceries, eating out, entertainment, gas, uh, things like that, that tend to change from month to month. So it's very important that we fill in our categories here in this um, top portion of the variable expenses, and you'll see why in just a moment. So we are going to put categories in here like groceries, eating out, uh, entertainment, gas, uh, and things like that. And we, we can put budgeted amounts in for those as well. So let's say, so those will give us the budgeted amounts that we're shooting for for these various categories. One thing I wanna put, point out really quick, you'll see up here, we're getting a negative number. It's saying that we have negative $710 left to budget. And that is just because we haven't put any actual income yet. We have a budgeted income, we haven't put anything actual in here. So according to this, all we have is that $500 that was in our account. So don't panic if you have um, a negative number up here to start with. Uh, it's because we didn't put in our, our actual numbers yet. Now, you'll notice um, over here in our variable expenses, uh, these are shaded columns, which means that we are not going to fill those in ourselves. So you can see that my budgeted amount automatically transferred over to this remaining amount, and this remaining amount will adjust as we enter our uh, expenses from the month. And where we are going to do that is down below here. Um, so this is our variable expense tracker, and this is kind of like a checkbook register. It is where we are going to input, say, you know, our grocery shopping trip uh, and how much we spent on that. And the reason I mentioned that it was important to input our categories up here is because um, this category dropdown is going to pull from that list. So you can categorize each of your transactions um, and see where your money is going. Now, before I start entering in my variable expenses, I want to kind of flesh out uh, the rest of my budgeted amounts up here at the top. And so I'm gonna take a second to do that and I will be right back. Okay, as you can see, I filled out uh, these categories a little more to kind of reflect our full budget here. And once I get to this point where I have my budgeted amounts, but I haven't yet started to put in any actual amounts, this is a great time to make a copy of the spreadsheet so that you kind of have a master copy each month and you don't have to start from scratch at zero and put in all your categories and all your budgeted amounts every month. So to make a copy of this, you will just go down here to the tab that you want to copy, click on this down arrow, and then click duplicate. And that will give me a copy of my spreadsheet and I can rename it by clicking on this arrow again, going to rename, and I could call this my master budget. Uh, and then each month I could just leave this one alone and just make a copy of it. And then I start out with all my categories, all of my budgeted amounts, and then I only have to input the actual. So that is a little tip to make it easier um, from month to month. So now that we have done that, let's go down and look at the variable expense tracker a little more here. So I will demonstrate how to use this. So uh, we are just going to input each of our transactions um, that we make throughout the month. To do that, I can put in a date here. Let's say it is 8-3-23. Uh, I'm gonna put in the amount of my transaction. So let's just say that is the amount. And then I'm gonna choose my category. And let's say that this one was um, groceries. And in the description, you can put whatever you want. I usually put uh, the name of the store where the transaction was. So just say that one was at Walmart. And then you would continue to do that for each of your transactions throughout the month. And you can decide 
how you want to do it. I usually do our budget reconciliation on Fridays. So I get all of our transactions from um, my card, my husband's card, or bank account. And every Friday I go through and record each of the individual transactions in this register here in the tracker part. When I do that, you can see up here, we entered something in the grocery category. You can see it automatically pulls um, that actual amount up here that we spent and lets me know how much of my grocery budget I have remaining. So it does all the math for you. You never have to wonder uh, kind of where you stand. And that is why uh, these drop down categories are so important here because it is letting you know uh, how you're doing with your budget at any point throughout the month. So let me input a few more of those and then you will be able to see this uh, a little more clearly here. All right, as you can see, I went through and populated some more transactions for the month and I chose categories for all of them. And so when we scroll back up here to our variable expenses, you can now see I have a little bit left in my groceries. I went over and eating out uh, I did pretty well. I have a lot left in most of my categories. This one I completely broke even. Um, so that will keep the running tally for you throughout the month so you can see kind of where you stand. I also went ahead and filled in my actual amounts for my income and my bills and my debt payments over here. And so that kind of filled out my summary table over here as well. So I can see um, what it looks like. And it also filled out my charts at the top. So uh, I actually have $615 left that I made but didn't budget. So I can decide where to allocate that, whether I want to put that um, toward my savings or make an extra payment toward my debt. I can very clearly see what I have left uh, in these boxes. Uh, the charts kind of just give a fun visual representation of all of this information that we put in down here. So uh, we can see how our breakdown goes up here, how, how much our bills are costing us, what percentage, our debt, our savings. Maybe we could do a little better at savings because our savings piece of the pie is pretty small here and how much is going toward our variable expenses. And this chart compares uh, what we had budgeted for the various categories um, compared to what the actual is. And you can see the, the key down here. We got pretty close on all of ours um, here, but you know, some months that, that might not be the case. And just a quick glance at this chart will show you okay, you know, we were doing well with our variable expenses, or maybe we are, one of our bills was unexpectedly high this month and our actual was more than our budgeted, so we'll need to compensate for that uh, at some point. One more area I wanted to show you is this last spending summary down here. So again, you can see these are shaded in, so you do not type in this section. It will fill out automatically for you. And what it does is it pulls the information from the entire chart and lets you know uh, the percentage of your spending um, that each category is taken up. So that on, not only takes into account our variable expenses, but also our bills and our debts um, and everything all in one place. So you can say that our rent um, made up 27% of our spending, our groceries made up 14%, and so on, um, all the way down to our entertainment, which was less than a percentage. So that's kind of a good at a glance uh, little summary of what we're spending, how much it's taking up, and it kind of makes us think uh, about our money in a different way uh, once we see you know, uh, all the percentages laid out like that. So I hope that this budget spreadsheet will be helpful for you. I love that it does all of the legwork for me. All of those formulas are automatically put in there. And so I just have to enter the numbers. It does all my calculations. It gives me a great representation of where my money's going and how we're doing with our spending from month to month so we can make smarter decisions and feel more secure about our full financial picture.